Meghan Markle's friend, Melissa McCarthy, has defended the Duchess following a rush of backlash over her American Riviera Orchard jam brand. Melissa was quick to praise Meghan, calling her inspiring, inslating those who have criticized her. A smart, interesting woman that has her own life, for some reason is incredibly threatening to some people. And I always think, how inspiring. Yes. I've never once been threatened by someone who's amazing. I just think, how inspiring. So it's really on the people throwing the hate. It's Megan's wonderful. You're like Strong women are awesome. The Duchess of Sussex has given away 50 limited edition jars of the strawberry jam to various influencers in a PR stunt to launch her new lifestyle brand. Joining me now is your biographer, Angela Levin. Good afternoon, Angela. Hello. Hi. Um, so you heard Melissa McCarthy there saying that uh, Megan is uh, incredibly threatening to some people. I have to agree with that. Yeah. Some people just seem to have a bad word to say about Megan continuously, even when she's doing something yeah. as innocent as re releasing some jam. How's that offending people? Well, I think there's two sorts of... Uh women who are very strong and some of them are delightful and absolutely amazing and some of them are really spiteful and not so much and there's a whole range of people in between so i think it's a bit of a nonsense thing to say not all women are scared of women who are powerful not at all i think the problem with megan is that she doesn't wait till things sort of materialize everything's got to be done immediately and if not she drops the people and moves on and does something else we've seen that with one of her husbands we've seen that with all sorts of things with the royal family um and i think that people find that um rather unpleasant um but melissa mccarthy i mean i think she's slightly frightened of Meghan, even though she's pretending that she's not. Because when Meghan had her 40th birthday, she invited her along. Um, they were chatting very nicely, having cups of tea. And there was poor Harry outside the window, not allowed in, playing with balls. And it looked very much a sort of um, Charles Dickens association thing where you'd look through the window and you want a sort of piece of cake um and megan thought it was hilarious and she began laughing and then melissa started laughing nothing wrong with that but you just felt that it was just a really rather strange thing to um find funny um but everybody has their own view of who they like and megan has does have a way of making some people think she's enormously wonderful and other people not liking her at all. And I think there are reasons at both ends of that. But um, you look at, but, 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 but wait, but wait, wait, Angela, talking about Harry being outside, you have no idea like what Harry's doing outside. That, that may be how, how the issue appears. Could be completely innocent. Just because she's having a birthday party doesn't mean Harry has to be in there holding a hand like some child, does it? It wasn't a birthday party, it was her birthday and she had her friend Melissa there. Um, he looked very lost. I mean, I spent he 15 months- That's Harry. your interpretation. No, no, that, that's your interpretation. No, no. He looked lost. Yeah, but that's your interpretation, so which, which means nothing. Hang on. No, hang no, no, on. no, 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 hang on. Let's, let's go back to something else you said there. You said that Megan likes to do everything straight away. She can't wait for things. She's done a soft launch of her website, American Riviera Orchard. She sent out 50 jars to her friends and influencers, something that lots of celebrities do when they're launching things. So she is taking this one slow and eventually she'll launch the website and it's probably going to be a success. So what, what, what do you say to that when you're saying she has to have everything immediately? You, you've got to listen to what I said before. I spent 15 months with Prince Harry writing his biography. So I think I know him very well and I think I can tell what mood he's in. So I don't think you can say to me, oh, it was just I was wrong about that because I think I was right. And when I see him, Megan pulling him along and he's always behind her, I feel exactly the same. When do you so, see that? When do you see that? We look at, okay, here's some video footage here. Is Megan pulling him along there? He's grabbing her wrist, pulling her along. How, how many pictures how you interpret have you got? things is how you interpret things. Being ridiculous. But, but you, you, how many you pictures interpret have things you got in a very, very of, strange of way. Megan and Harry walking. Wait, well, that's my way. Oh, well, there's another I've... video of Harry walking in front of her, pulling her along. It's not, it's not Megan doing it, is it? I would, well, you've picked Angela, those two. Would, you might have suggest... picked those two, but I've found that when he's when she's pulling him. So you can't tell me out of two pictures that I've got something wrong. Well, if no, you're, it if sounds you're like you've got a vendetta against me. Meghan Markle. That's what it can, sounds you like. You sound talk. like, okay. Angela, Angela, with respect, you sound like a troll. You sound like a social media troll. Everything you can no, point out that's, that's incorrect. Very rude. That, 
You it's don't call someone a dog with respect. That's no. without respect. No, no, it is with respect. Um, it is let with me respect. talk about something else. Abigail Spencer, who is also a friend of Megan's, she has given the sixth jar of jam, right? And she, we would see her lying on the grass, hugging it with a dog close by. It was a very sort of set up thing. Um, that's one when she's sitting up. You're sitting down. And I, I thought, you know, how ridiculous. This is a jar of jam. Why are we all getting hysterical about a jar of jam? Um, who's who's, who's hysterical really, about it? it? It's PR. She's trying to sell something. This is called advertising. I know what PR is. I know what PR well, is. Well, with respect, clearly you don't. You're saying it's so set it's up. It's a PR stunt. You're here to fight me, so why don't you say I'm not, goodbye? I'm not here, I'm not here to right. fight you. I'm, I'm just laying out Thank the truth to you. Her. You're very rude. No, Angela, you don't want to be, you don't want to be challenged. Really you won't be challenged Goodbye. and you won't be scrutinized. I'd like to know, oh, and she's gone. You see, this is what happens. When you challenge people, when you go to them and you say to them, here's some facts, here's some truths, some people don't like it. And if people can't answer the truths, what do they do? They hang up or they just start shouting or they just start denying. Angela Levin believes that Harry's being pulled along by Megan everywhere she, he goes. And yet we just showed her three different videos of Harry and Meghan walking out of buildings. And who's in the front? Harry. Who's leading? Who's pulling? Harry's pulling Meghan. But that doesn't play into the narrative of Angela Levin. It just doesn't. Now, you can say what you want about Meghan Markle. I don't know her. But has she been successful? Yes. Has Harry been successful with her? Yes. Will this jam, which is going to cost $200, is that going to be successful? Probably. I ain't going to buy it. But it probably is going to be successful. Well, thank you, Angela Levin, for joining me. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Now, did any of you saw that coming? <laughs> any of you? Because I'll tell you, when I watched this, right? When I watched it, you know when, well, that's why I use the imagery that I use. It's sort of like I have my, I had my um, hand covering my eyes, but at the same time, I like, you know, I, I had it kind of, my fingers kind of open so I can still kind of peek a little bit. Look, I get embarrassed very quickly for other people. And I get embarrassed off of even just watching something embarrassing happening in a movie or or, or TV show or any of that stuff, right? I, I just, and this, I was like, oh, baby Jesus. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I will say this. It took guts, right? It really took guts for that journalist to do what he did. And I don't know any of his 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 past reporting or anything like that. I don't know what the consequences are going to be uh, for him. Having said that, um, they were prepared. So as I have said before, nothing really happens without like the producers and so on knowing that this is the angle that they are going to take now i'm sure they briefed the, <laughs> i want to call her something else but i'm not going to i'm going to be a gentleman <laughs> but um uh the 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 person that came on there to um you know blabber nonsense they most likely told her listen this is what we're going to talk about blah 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 and she's like okay great i know i know what my talking you know lines are and off they went she wasn't expecting him to go listen lady <laughs> you are a you're a troll you're like a troll i was like i literally was like did he just call her a troll i'm like this is not happening right now I was like, someone needs to like, someone needs to give that dude. <laughs> I think, sorry, I don't mean to giggle, but I think 
that either someone switched his coffee or tea or the spell of like bull, you know what, um, vanished in that precise moment while he was on air. So, so he just talked some truth. It was just absolutely, absolutely amazing, right? And I, I, I started to think, imagine if more people, more journalists in the UK, and I'm going to say, and around the world, actually did their job. Like, actually challenged the people who came on to, 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 to say that they're experts or this or that. Right, Because also, the information that we receive off of these experts, quote-unquote, is not just royal experts. It's all these people who go on, on our televisions, on news channels, and they're the expert of this, and the expert in that, and the expert. And what they're there basically to do is to promote and, and propagate a certain ideology that they already have. Do you folks remember that that man who um, was really high up in, in 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 government, and his job was to deal with the Israeli Palestinian issue? Also, he he had a, a high high position at at the UN, advising and counseling and and and, and all of that. And where did we see him last? We saw him harassing, insulting, being racist to a young man in New York City, a hot dog vendor, right? So, oh, sorry, not, I, 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 he, had, he had a stand or, or one of those food, food, food truck things, right? That, 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 that says, I, I don't, I don't want to miss, miss, um, label what 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 this what the truck is or if it's a dog and vendor but you folks know what i'm talking about right um and this is someone who was advising the president who who had these these positions and he is racist saying these islamophobic stuff to this young man right so all these people who you see sit there and they talk and they're like, I'm expert in this. And everyone goes on with already an ideology that they want to promote. Even the people I like, they are people who I like who are experts or, or, or commentators who I like to listen to their opinions, but it's an opinion, right? I will listen to it and go, okay, I, could, I, I, I see the point. I see that point, but I wonder where they're getting that information from. Who is your source, right? So here I go again with like <laughs> being aware, just just bringing awareness because this stuff is not isolated. I keep I keep saying this like a broken record. None of it is isolated. The same way how we with eagle eyes can now look at these royal experts and see them for what they are. We also have to start looking at the rest of the media. And also start looking at the people who we bring into our homes through the television or cable or whatever um, and trust the information they are giving to us. <sighs> what a what an intro. Eh? Wow. Okay, so next. How am I feeling for those who have asked and for those who have um wished me well thank you so very much i am feeling i would say 99.9 percent .9 better um i got home. okay let me tell you folks this funny story I, I i think it's funny anyways maybe you folks will not but i think it's hilarious so i i i called i called my my, my parents from guatemala and i said hey would you folks be able to come and pick me up from the airport, right? And uh, so my my dad is like, yeah, 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 no worries. So I, I sent him the flight information and so on. So 
I get off the plane, I go through immigration and so on, and I have my luggage and I'm pulling it. And I was like, okay. So I called my uh, I called my dad, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're outside. I was outside. Just tell me what what post because when you exit the airport for the pickup side, um, there are these different posts, and each post has either a letter or a number. So, anyways, I ended up going. Not to the arrivals. I, I went like below arrivals, ground. I wasn't paying attention. So I'm out of ground looking around. I was like, I don't see them. So I call again. And my dad is like, where are you? Like, your mom is now in the airport looking for you. I was like, what? <laughs> so I realized that I'm on ground, not on arrivals. I said, ah, I'm like, dad, I'm at, I'm at ground. He's like, how did you end up on ground? I said, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. So I get back to arrivals. <laughs> I find my dad. Uh, so I put all the stuff in, in 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 the car. And he's like, well, you're here, but your, your, your mom is not. I said, don't worry, I'll go look for her. So I'm in, I'm in the airport looking for my mom. I, so I, 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 I see her and, and she's walking towards me. So I'm like, oh, like smiley face and, and going about to like, you know, give, Give her a hug and the woman just walks right by me and i'm like hey hey here i am i'm your son <laughs> and she continues walking and i was like what the heck i'm like mom mom and she turns around and she's looking and and still i'm standing I'm like mom it, it she's <laughs> it's not funny it's not funny so i people now are like looking at us because this woman, she's standing there looking, looking, and, and she, she's probably like, who the heck is saying mom, mom? So she goes to turn around to continue walking. So I, I walk towards her, and I'm like tapping, tap, I tap her, and I'm like, mom, it's me. She turns around, and she goes, ay, bendito. <laughs> she goes, oh, my God. She goes, who do you think you are? <laughs> I said, Mom, what do you mean? She goes, look at you with, she goes, what is that kind of, what, 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 what look, just look at you with the hat. <laughs> my mom thought I looked too rich for myself. <laughs> I said, Mom, what do you mean? She's like, look at you. What do you think? You're Rico Suave or something? She goes, look at you, look, look with your hat and your, and your, and, and, and a nice little outfit going on. And she goes, what, do you think you own the airline? <laughs> it's like, Mom, like, what the heck? <laughs> so, so that was her like excuse for not recognizing me. I was like, yeah, mom, I know you don't love me. I'm, I'm, I'm the one son you don't love. You don't even recognize me anymore. She's like, shut up. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, it, it was just funny. I'm feeling much better. And um, uh, things are almost back to some kind of normality. So Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for your um, for your recommendations and your um, concern and your well wishes. I absolutely appreciate it. So thank you. piece of human uh, mm, no 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 Antonio to this human or thing or person I I I I, I don't know I I really you know sometimes you just have to let it out right and I think I've let it out of my system, but immediately that I have to talk, well, I don't have to, but that I'm referencing this person, I just feel like vomiting. So vile, so disgusting. Now, I am not going to show the image of um, the woman that he was interviewing. I have not been able to go beyond 
10 seconds of that interview, if that's what we want to call it. Um, it's very disturbing to me that this man who knows exactly what he's doing, he, everything he says and does is, 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 is with intent and with purpose. He has, as a guess, and I am not going to, look, I'm, I'm not a, a medical person, I'm not a doctor, I, I didn't watch the interview, but clearly to me, just even if I were to just look at a still, I would go, what, what has happened with that person? I, I, he has an African American or, or a person of color who has, oh man, this is so disgusting. And to think that he's allowed and has been allowed to do what he did. And to think that he, his intention, allegedly, 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 look at in just those 10 seconds or less that, that I was able to, to, to even tolerate watching that, that, that garbage. He maintains his composure. I'm the white hair. I'm, I'm the white hero. I, I am the man with, 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 with the moral authority. I am the person who, who look, Look at how I, I, I contained my composure, how calm I am, and, and, and even I, 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 I will address this, this African American or this person of color with, with, with genuine concern and care. But you see, you see, they're crazy. Look, watch, watch, you see? Like they're not these, these African Americans, these, these, these black people, these colored people. That, that was the first thing that came to my head. Look. <sighs> Fuck. Sorry. Um, I thought I was going to be able to talk about this. And I don't think I can. <sighs> because. <sighs> you know, I'm trying to be very mindful the things I say and I I I've navigated within my family real mental health issues and I when I say real mental health issues I, I'm not discounting any sort of mental health issues I, I'm, I, I'm 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 just saying like 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 it like it's not a joke right Mental health is not a joke. It's not something you parade on 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 some channel or or on 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 your YouTube program or something like that to 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 use. So disgusting. So disgusting. And to think. That you just say one stupid word and these channels are quick to suspend you or to, or to demonetize you also, and they have these deplorable people, disgusting people, with no values, no morals, who then they use, use a person. Once again, I do not know if this person has any mental health issues or not. I do not know. I'm not making assumptions, right? I'm just talking from if I were to look at a still, a picture, as we're looking at right now. And if someone were to ask me, what is this picture all about? 
I am talking about now what, what I may say. So I'm not making any assumptions here. I've navigated mental health issues within my own family. And to think that anyone can, would take advantage at a low moment of one's mental health is just absolutely evil. It's evil it's deplorable. It's the work of the devil. And please forgive me. I do not understand how people could do this and then go to bed and rest their head and be okay with what they've done and be proud of what they've done. This is the legacy that they're leaving their children. This is the legacy that they've, 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 they've broadcast to their fellow citizens, to the world. And the sad thing about all of this is that many of these people are celebrated. There is so much wrong in our world today. And it's not like it, 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 it wasn't there before. It's always been there, right? I think, and, and, and I don't, I, I recall in one of my um, studies in university, we were discussing um, sort of the, the 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 proletariats and 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 well, you know, the the the, the wealthy, the very rich, and um, the very poor, and the very rich. Everything was transactional. Everything had a sort of transactional where you look, well, um, King Edward did this or King, King George did that, married um, Princess this in order to gain access to the. It was all transactional, right? There's no emotions involved. It was all, how can we, right, get more property or, or create alliances and it's done through marriage. Um, and a lot of it was, was this sort of very calculated way of doing things, right? The poor, it, it was a little bit more emotional driven. So we started talking about romantic love and I'd never heard that term before. So I'm like, what, what do you mean by romantic love? And our professor was saying, um, and um, Professor, if you ever listen to any of this and I misquote you, please, please forgive me. I'm, I'm just recalling here. He, he, he said something to the regards. He goes, "Romantic love is, 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 is actually a sort of pretty recent thing. This whole idea that you meet someone and you have the butterflies and stuff and you fall in love and all of that." Then you get married or whatever, right? That is romantic love, right? You hear the violins and you do the dance and you, you know. He goes, romantic love never really existed. Everything was transactional. It was done with the purpose of alliances. So he said, you know, a lot of these marriages, there was no love in them. Yes, eventually, like maybe they, 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 they cared about each other. And as a matter of fact, some of them, yes, they did actually have that, that thing, that, that romantic love feeling. And I know I'm trying to make here a big leap between two things because there's cruelty in, in people, no matter if you're wealthy or if you're poor. 
right? The same thing as 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 mental health. Mental health can 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 affect any and all of us. It doesn't it doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank. It can affect us all. But what I'm trying to almost take this big leap in saying, people of lesser means are a lot more compassionate. And there was an interesting stat. Uh, this, is, this is many years ago. I think it came out when I was in university also. And they were looking at which provinces... Uh, and territories within um, Canada gave more to charity. And you would think that perhaps the richer provinces would be the ones that give the highest. Not the case. At that time, it was actually the provinces that struggled. And I think it was either um, Newfoundland and Labrador maybe New Brunswick, it, it, it's one of the maritime um, provinces that actually per capita gave the highest amount to charity. That blew my mind. And I've also seen, I mean, experienced where I've gone in a, to a destination and you know, I've ended up making friends with, with people and they, they you know, in, in, invite me to their, to their home. And I, I, I mean, it, 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 it gets me emotional because I'll, I'll see them make, make, making food and, 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 and stuff. And I'm going, they don't have a lot. Like I can just go to a restaurant and, 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 and pay for food and, and, Eat like, like, please, please don't do any of this for. Oh, I'm getting sorry. Give me, give me a second. Let me just compose myself. Okay, thank you for that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, they, they, they give a lot of themselves, right? There, they, there, there is an understanding. I think. When a person has had to either work very hard for what they've got or they understand what it means to go hungry, um, if they don't have a lot but they have to make do, they understand pain, they understand suffering, they understand um, all these things that perhaps makes you more empathetic, right? Like, I, I couldn't fathom this very educated man who has been in media for such a long time and truly, I think, understands what he's doing, would allow a person who has this sort of white, ashy sort of makeup on, is, is, is screaming and yelling, has her top kind of pulled up, and parts of her breast, I, I, it, it's just, I, I, it, it's such a disturbing image to me. And <sighs> there is, it's so evil. It's so evil. And, and, and that was the worst thing, you know? From, from doing the sort of wrap up for the things of this past week, that was that 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 hit me, like it truly, truly stopped me and it hit me and I went, oh my goodness. And I'm a person of faith. I've, I've said that before. I'm not a big um, believer in 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 religion even though i do follow the teachings of 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 religion uh, i take i take what i think is good right and i leave all the judgmental parts away and try and live my life as 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 
as a good citizen, a good human, and to do good in the world as much as I can. I saw that and I, 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 after I, I, I just prayed. I honestly, I just prayed. Because I, I, I didn't know what else to do, really. Because I kept thinking, if that was a family member of mine, if that was a family member of mine, my mother, my aunt, my grandmother, my sister, I don't have sisters, but a sister. You know? I know sometimes we in 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 the squad and stuff you know sometimes people think we're we're just using hyperbole and 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 you know some of us get really passionate and and we use certain words and that 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 are very strong but we are good people and when good people see such vileness such 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 evil right for some of us it may hit us immediately and for some of us, it may not. It it may kind of kind of just just take a little bit longer because so, sometimes we we're so um, uh, in 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 wrapped, right? And I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> or we, we're so wrapped up in 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 what is important to us that. You know, it's it's it 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 may just slide, but this person has been doing this kind of damage and spewing this kind of hatred day in and day out, and he does it about women of color, black women, minorities. And a matter of fact, he's just a coward and a vile person who takes advantage of people. Allegedly, allegedly. I'm going to stop and I'm going to take a little break because I need to like, I feel like I need to just wash this off of me. I'm going to go make myself... <laughs> A cup of tea and yeah okay I want that exact sandwich again oh it was pretty epic you got one of the coveted American Riviera Orchard jams how was that that and sandwich was incredible and it's numbered like yeah. one of 50 I'm gonna keep it in my fridge forever I want that exact sandwich again oh it was pretty epic Good evening, everyone, especially those who are serving, have served, and continue to serve. Tonight, I have the distinct honor of presenting this year's Soldier of the Year Award. I first met Sergeant First Class Elizabeth Marks at the Invictus Games in Orlando 2016, where I presented her with not one, but four gold medals that she'd won in swimming. To me, she epitomizes the courage, resilience, and determination represented across our service community. And this is not just because of her swimming abilities. Ellie has courageously overcome every obstacle to cross her path. She has turned her pain into purpose and led through compassion and willpower, showing others that the impossible is indeed possible. Despite the injuries she endured during her deployment as a medical assistant in Iraq, along with numerous surgeries and setbacks that would have deterred many, she has persevered tirelessly becoming the first woman in the Army's world-class athlete program, as well as the first swimmer the program had ever seen. She's also taken her recovery a step further, using her experiences and achievements to inspire and insist others in their mental and physical journey into sport, ensuring those who can't see a way out or through are introduced to the medicine of sport that saved her too. Through the Invictus community, she has supported so many, coaching Ukraine and Colombia when they've needed it the most, always remembering what it was like at the beginning of the healing journey. Ellie, 
You embody the Invictus spirit through your selfless service. You know that sport doesn't just save lives, it transforms them for the better. And in finding your own cure, you've helped countless brothers and sisters in staying alive. Your unwavering commitment serves as a beacon of inspiration, offering hope and setting a powerful example for others to follow. I am honored to call you my friend and can't thank you enough for being you and for Mason, your husband, being so supportive of you. To all the service members in the room tonight, past and present, know that your community and indeed the international community is grateful. Grateful for all the sacrifices you and your families have made. Grateful for your service to your country. Grateful for continuing the important values we learned. Tonight is for you. Thank you for all that you've done. All right, that was just really, really great. I wanted to end the podcast in um, with something uplifting and, and just wonderful. Um, and that gives us that feeling of, of, of good people and uh, people of service and humanity and, and caring. I did have a bunch of other things to talk about um, like this. And this, and this, and this. But, you know, I know you folks have heard most of all of this already. Um, yeah, so I'm going I'm to end it um, here. Okay. Thank you so much for dropping in. And um, thank you for supporting this channel. If you like our content, do leave a comment, give the thumbs up. And um, if you're not a subscriber yet, do consider subscribing. And if you would like to um, support the channel also in a different way or in an additional way, which is becoming a member, um, do consider it. Thank you so, 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 so very much. And um, take care of yourself, okay? and of your loved ones. Until we speak again. Bye for now. Saw you walking by today With the sunset in your eyes I couldn't find the strength to say What was running through my mind You couldn't help but notice me Staring with that awkward smile From the other side of Thompson Street I felt love for a little while Cause you looked beautiful In the sunset glow In that sunset glow
white dress on, with that white dress on. 